Mr. President. Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, we talk a lot in this chamber, as well we should, about the least among us, about how we can uh, protect and lift up the powerless. And that's a good thing. Um, I, I can't think of any person who, um, who, who is less power than a potential human life, than an unborn baby. Now, Roe v. Wade is, of course, about abortion. We know that. But, but it's also about something else. Roe v. Wade is also about, it's about federalism. Roe v. Wade is also about the American people. Roe v. Wade is about whether a finite group of the managerial elite, and by the managerial elite, I mean the entrenched politicians, the bureaucracy, the media, the academics, the corporate phonies, all of whom think they're smarter and more virtuous than the American people, should have the right to make moral decisions for the American people instead of the American people making those decisions for themselves. That's really what Roe v. Wade is about. Now, Mr. President, I am uh, I'm pro-life, and I am anti-Roe v. Wade. So I, I want to say uh, up front, I do have an opinion. But Mr. President, even, uh, even pro-choice legal scholars who believe in legalized abortion on demand understand as does every fair-minded person who knows a law book from a J. Crew catalog that Roe v. Wade is one of the most arbitrary, it's one of the most uh, ad hoc, it's one of the most poorly reasoned decisions in the history of the United States. In Roe v. Wade, as you know, Mr. President, the United States Supreme Court held that a generalized right to privacy, not explicit in the Constitution, means that a woman has the virtually unfettered discretion to terminate a human life. Some, to be fair, would say a potential human life before viability. What's viability? As my colleagues talked about, that's a really, really good question. But I digress. Anyone, Mr. President, who knows a law book from a J. Crew catalog also knows that there's absolutely no foundation, not in the text, not in the structure, not in the history, not in the tradition of the Constitution for a constitutional right to abortion, and certainly not on the basis of some unmoored general right to privacy that's not enunciated in the Constitution. And don't even get me started, Mr. President, on, the, on Roe v. Wade's trimester analysis and the ruling. Try to find trimester in the United States Constitution. You won't. You can't. The truth is, and people on both sides of this issue who are fair-minded and reasonably objective, and by that I mean can see the other point of view, 
The truth is that Roe v. Wade's constitutional right to an abortion is a 48-year-old judge-invented rule that represents the United States Supreme Court winging it. Now, I know what we were told. We were told back in the 1970s, look, we've got to have a national rule to settle this issue. Only Washington, D.C. can settle this issue. We have to have a, a, a rational rule. We need some peace in the land. We need consensus. How's that working out for us, Mr. President? Roe v. Wade didn't settle anything. Now, in the Dodd case, which the United States Supreme Court is about to hear, the United States Supreme Court has a really rare opportunity to say, as Justice Scalia wrote in one of his opinions, that value judgments made on behalf of people should be voted on by those people and not dictated from Washington, D.C. In the Dodd case, the United States Supreme Court, Mr. President, has the rare opportunity to say what we all know, and that is that America is this big, wide, open, diverse, sometimes messy, sometimes dis dysfunctional, sometimes imperfect, but always trying to get better group of good people. That's what America is. And we don't always agree, especially not on value judgments especially not on the ultimate value judgment, like when it is appropriate to take a human life. That's why we get to vote. That's why we get to vote. And that's why we have elected representatives who oftentimes vote on our behalf. Elected representatives who also can be unelected if we don't, know how, if we don't like how they vote. And finally, Mr. President, in Dodd, the United States Supreme Court has the rare opportunity to defederalize and deconstitutionalize abortion and return the issue to the states where it was before Roe v. Wade. The United States Supreme Court in Dodd does not have the opportunity, and this is important, to say no right to an abortion in America. Let me say that again, because some of the proponents of Roe v. Wade, I, I think, have, have shaded the truth on this. At issue before the Supreme Court in Dodd is not the right to have an abortion. It's the right... It, 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 the, the issue before the Supreme Court in, uh, in Dodd is what's the appropriate political form to make these value judgments. Is it the government... Or is it the people? And I hope, Mr. President, that the United States Supreme Court takes advantage of this rare opportunity before it. <coughs> Mr. President, I yield to the Senator from Mississippi.